Well, hey, everybody. Merry Christmas. Uh, we're so glad that you're with us today. And uh, I don't know what brings you to Highlands at one of our locations today, whether you're in Bluefield or married in Bristol. I just want to say we want to welcome you here from our family to yours. Merry Christmas. I hope your Christmas day has been awesome so far and it's only going to get better. OK, uh, maybe some of you come because you really need to be here and you want the community. Others of you come because, man, it's it's just church family for you. Right. And even though you've had some times around the table with your family, you wanted to have a time with your church family. And so we're honored and humbled that you would spend a little bit of Christmas day with us. And the neat thing today. We got all of our families together. We got kids in the room today. And uh, don't get upset, parents, if there's a, a, a scream here or a cry there. I got five kids. Just make yourself at home. We're going to get through this. We're going to have a good time. All right? Uh, most of you were with us at one of our series when we did this great joy, good news, present peace leading up to the journey to Christmas and the birth of Jesus. And that was just an incredible series. And if you were with us on Christmas Eve, you remember that I talked about so much of the ministry of Jesus was around a table. And you're probably getting ready to head to a table right after I get finished today, have another Christmas meal. But the motivation for that table message on Christmas Eve Eve came from the first message in our series. And I received an email from a new person who had attended Highlands that day. I talked a little bit about family and gathering around the table and this person said, I wish I had a family table together with at Christmas. I and mean, it sort of broke my heart, you know, because I realized that for many of us, life has changed. Some of you have gone through a divorce. Some of you have uh, lost someone that you've loved. And if you do have table, a family around the table this year, it, it, there's an empty seat there. Some of you have gone through sickness. Some of you have gone through disappointments. When we look back over this past year, some of you have burned a bridge with your family where they finally just said, enough, I'm done, because of repeated bad choices, whatever it might be. And what is surprising to me, and the reason I love our church so much is you guys give us so much feedback. <laughs> I love feedback. And when I hear from you, I know that I'm hearing from God and that God through his spirit is helping me serve you and care for you to the best of our ability because, hey, that's what we do. We want to help you. We want to encourage you. And so when I thought about being with you on Christmas Day, I realized that some of you are living in some discouraging times. It probably doesn't help. I don't know if you're like me, but I hate the time change. I mean, I hate when I get home with it either. It's already dark. And, uh, you know, the longest night of the year was just a couple of days ago, December the 22nd, winter solstice. I mean, do we need any more darkness? And I think that's the reason we all love the Christmas lights and the Christmas decorations. But in our hearts, and in our lives at times, because of the situations and circumstances we find ourselves in, Sometimes this time of year around the Christmas holidays can be a little discouraging. And maybe it's a little dark for you this Christmas. I wanted to try to encourage you because sometimes things don't work out as planned. You know, situations don't always work themselves out. And I noticed when Jesus, when I started studying for that Christmas EV service, that, that Jesus, when he shared a meal with people, he shared a meal with folks who were often broken, who were needy who needed him and needed his encouragement and needed his wisdom in their life. And so, you know, they would gather around Jesus and all of a sudden their whole life could be changed. I mean, they would be transformed, if you will, into a whole different person. Um, we talk about disappointments, you know, I, I think some of you probably can really relate because uh, you got up this morning and uh, you went to the tree and you've been looking at those packages under the tree. And in your mind, I know how you think, in your mind, you're thinking, that, that, this is what I'm getting for Christmas. You ripped open that package and it wasn't what you thought. And you're a little disappointed, right? Um, this, this dates me, of course, but I, I thought, uh, there's a story takes me all the way back to my teenage years, my best buddy. And he, uh, uh, this guy, you know, he didn't have a lot at all. He came from, you know, a family with a bunch of kids and, uh, but we're close. I mean, we're buddies. 
But in those days, as teenagers, uh, the way it was when I was sort of in those years, we, we didn't think about Christmas gifts of giving to other people. We were thinking what mom and dad was getting us, right? I mean, it was all about what we were going to get. And my buddy calls me on Christmas Eve, and he says, hey, are you there? He says, I, I want to run by. And I said, sure, you know, I'm home. And I thought I was just going to come by, and we are going to eat some candy or something like that. He, he brings me a gift. And uh, have you ever been in those moments where you're like, oh, you know, He's giving me something, and you just sort of feel like I got to give him something back. <laughs> I, I got to give him something. Today, I've learned. I've learned from that. I always have a couple of packages wrapped in my closet that are, you know, just good gifts that I can give to anybody who comes by with an unexpected gift from me. I've, I've learned from that, from this, from this story. So I run back in my room. My mom and I have no clue this is going on. I run back in my room, and I'm looking, what can I give him? What can I give? What's not been opened? You know what I found? Uh, it, for those of you who are younger, I found three blank cassette tapes. Now, let, let me explain what that is. In my day, my teenage years, <laughs> uh, cars used to have cassette players. We had music on our cassettes, and we would record music off the radio and these little recording devices, and that's how we got our music. That was before the Walkman and the CD and all these other, you know, newfangled ways, Apple. Uh, Apple didn't exist in those days, okay? So I'm thinking, it's all I got. So I quickly put them in a little gift bag. I didn't wrap them, and I take them out, and he gives me the gift he gave me, and it, it was this incredible jacket. I, I, I love jackets. I've got way too many, but I mean, it was like a, a hiking jacket. I mean, it was, it was a great gift, and I thought, mm, it's probably not going to be good, and I handed him my gift, and he opened those cassette tapes, and I just remember as he, you know, pulled them out of that bag, and he looks at them, and he's like, oh, cassette tapes. So he originally thinks, maybe it's got music on it. And then he realized, these are blank cassette tapes. So I, I sort of wish I hadn't even done that because I think he, you know, he left. <laughs> I mean, the, the, his face of disappointment was one I never forgot disappointment in his life. It was obvious. Well, you know, I, I think about uh, so many disappointments in our life, and that takes me back to when Jesus was born. And I think about Mary. I mean, have you ever thought about putting yourself in her shoes? I mean, here she is, a virgin, uh, a teenage girl, and she is engaged to Joseph. And because of Joseph, they've got to travel in her ninth month of pregnancy. And so here they go on this journey. They have no resources. And they finally arrive, and she's about to give birth. There's no room for them in any kind of inn or hotel. There's no, there's no good place for them to have this child. And so the innkeeper says, well, you know, you can go over to the stable and, um, you know, you can find some rest there. And she has Jesus in a stable where there's a bunch of smelly animals, right? I mean, Mary, uh, she had to be disappointed on how things worked out with the birth of Jesus. I think the fact is um, we can all relate, can't we? Uh, I mean, there are days that we encounter in our life that are disappointing. And the truth is this, because of Christmas, uh, because of what we have the opportunity to know today, you don't have to stay discouraged. You don't have to stay disappointed. I could give you a bunch of things, but hey, I, I know you got the kids, and I know we got places to go and family to see, but I want to give you four quick things today. Uh, four things that when you face discouragement in your life, or when you face disappointment, or when you have a dark day, I just want to remind you, I want, I want us to be, I want us to leave on a, on a great note today. Here's the first thing. Remember that Jesus Christ, he's an encourager. He is our encourager. I love what Psalm 34, 18 says, says this, the Lord is close to the brokenhearted. He rescues those whose spirits are crushed. Yeah, the first way that God tells us and reminds us that he is with us is that he is an encourager for us. He is Emmanuel, which means God with us. Jesus is actually saying when he is born, I am with you. I am for you. He tells us in this verse, he's close. 
And when you look back over 2022 and you've had some tough times and you may have had some disappointing things that have happened in your life, maybe you didn't close the sale, you didn't complete the project, you didn't get the promotion, things didn't work out at your workplace, you didn't win the mega millions, you know, none of you did because I would know about it by now. None of you won those things. And your hopes and your dreams of what you thought might happen in this past year, these 360 some days that we have almost completed, just didn't happen. It just didn't work out. And you've asked, man, where's God in all this? Where's the Lord in all this? I've heard you guys talk about great news and joy and present peace. Where's God in my life, in my situation? Well, Jesus would say this, he hasn't left you. He's where he's always been. He's right there with you. And Jesus Christ encourages me in my disappointing times by reminding me I never go through anything alone. He's always with me. And, you know, here's, here's what I've learned in these seasons of discouragement in my life. This is what I've learned over serving the Lord over 40 some years is that the darkest part of the night is when his light will shine the brightest. That's the God we have. He encourages us by helping us to know that he has a purpose and he has a plan for our life. And, um, I, you know, I know it's Christmas Day, but hey, I want to tell you something. I want to invite you back uh, to the first of the year. We have, we're going to celebrate all that God's done next week. And then on January 8th, we're going to start a brand new series. And we're sort of going to re refocus as who we are in the church and how we can experience life with Jesus in a new and fresh way. It's going to be awesome. And uh, I just want to invite you back as you begin out 2023. I, I want to, I want you to know that God has a purpose for your life, just like he has a purpose for our church. And we know this, don't we? I mean, there's a, a verse in Jeremiah 29, verse 11, that says, I know the plans that God has for you. They're plans for good, not for disaster. They're plans that God gives us a future and a hope. In other words, God says, I don't want to hurt you. I want to help you. I'm not against you. I'm for you. I created you. I have a purpose for your life that is bright, that has momentum that has meaning and it is a plan that will bring fulfillment that the world can never give you so remember when you're encouraged he is with us here's second thing remember that christ is our strength now one of my all-time favorite verses paul tells us in philippians chapter 4 verse 13 and this is what he says he says i can do all things through christ who strengthens me my mom, who's 88 years old, just had hip surgery. It's her favorite verse, all right? And on her dresser, she has that verse emboldened, and it's been framed. And when she was, you know, getting a little discouraged about her hip surgery, I reminded her of that verse. And here she is in the Lazy Boy, and she says, right, you're right, I got to get up. All right, Lord, strengthen me. And every day, and I was talking to her just a couple of days ago, and she said, you know what? God's word's true. Every day, get a little stronger. He strengthens me. That's a great verse, isn't it? And some of you might need to cut that verse out and frame it and put it on your dresser so you can be reminded in 2023 that he is our strength. No matter what comes our way, God says he'll enable us to handle it with his strength. Not on our own strength, but with his strength. That's really the theme of the book of Psalms, isn't it? That life is tough, but God is good. Life can be tough. This isn't heaven yet, but God is good. And God says today that he's going to encourage us when we're disappointed. He'll strengthen us when we're weak. Here's the third thing. Remember that Christ is our God throughout our life. I mean, if you have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ, you would count yourself as a follower, which I think most of us that are gathered in our locations today, we would say we're followers of Jesus. Well, he's our God. When I'm confused, and that happens a lot in my life, you know, and I don't know which way to go because there's so many options today, I have to go back to God, and I've learned He'll guide me. Matter of fact, this is what we find in John chapter 8, verse 12. Look what it says. It says, Then Jesus spoke to them again, and this is what He said I am the light of the world. He who follows me shall not walk in darkness, but you will have the light 
of life. So let me ask you, when you face a new year in 2023 with all these crazy things we hear all over the world and in our news, what are you worried about? <laughs> what are you uptight about today? What is it that keeps you awake at night? Because you see, here's the thing I know. All of us, when we face a new year, we're going to face some major decisions in 2023. We just are. Now, we don't know what they are. Uh, we have no clue what we're going to face when we, you know, break out into a new year. But I guarantee you, you and I'm going to have some major decisions to make next year. Now, on what basis are you going to make those decisions? Because here's what normally happens. And we all know this, right? Well, you say, well, I'm just going to do whatever I feel is right. I'm going to trust my gut and whatever I feel like, if this is the right thing, I'm going to do it. Well, I just want to caution you to say that feelings are highly unreliable. Don't ever make major decisions on how you feel. Or maybe you might say, well, I'm just going to look at what everybody else is doing. And I, I'm just going to go along with the crowd. And I'm just sort of going to, you know, if they like it, I'll probably like it. If they think it's okay, I'll probably think it's okay. Well, it's not a good decision process either just to go along with the majority because what we've learned over the years, the majority is often wrong. You need to be able to have a place when you face doubt that you can get true guidance, you can get perfect direction that's true. So you ask, well, where in the world can I get that? <laughs> I mean, I don't think I've ever heard that that's a reliable resource, that that's a possibility. Well, it is. You know where you can get that guiding light in your life? Right here. And it's God's Word. And uh, if you will get into the Word of God, here's what I want to promise you. This book will never steer you in a wrong direction. It's impossible. It's never going to steer you the wrong way. I, I love back in Psalm 119, uh, there's a verse in verse 105. It's what it says. Your Word is a lamp to my feet. It's a light to my path. This is what God does. God gives you enough light. You know, he doesn't want us to see. He doesn't, he doesn't want us to know when we're going to die, when our last days are. And that'd be awful, right? Uh, he just gives us enough light in our journey to take the next step. And when we're faithful and we step out into his light and we go the direction he has led us, you know what God does? He gives us enough light to take the next step. And that's the reason we need a dependence on him every day of our life. His word truly is that light, that lamp to our path. It illuminates, keeps us from stumbling. Because <laughs> I need it, don't you? There's so many things that trip me up in the culture in which we live. I really need that. Well, here's the last thing. Finally, I would say this. You remember that Jesus Christ can actually help you change. Uh, he truly can. Uh, did you know that when you get discouraged that God's, he's not a God that looks at you and says, oh my goodness, you know, why dust yourself up and, and uh, you, you get up and, and you, you cheer up. You, you, you just cheer up. That's not how God works. God actually, he has the power to actually change you. This is a neat thing about God. In fact, he wants to use your discouragement to help you learn a new attitude or a new approach to enable you to make better choices. You see, God's not so much interested in just allowing you to survive. You know, he, he, he wants us to thrive. I mean, that's, what, that's what Jesus does. He came so that he could be the perfect savior, so that he could invade your life, so that you could actually change from the sinful person that you could never change from because we're all infected with this disease of sin. But Jesus is able to change us. <laughs> you know, God says, don't just drive out the darkness. He says, hey, flip on the light. And that is Jesus. In Ephesians chapter five, verse nine, Paul says this. He says, for this light within you produces only good and right and true. In other words, when the light of God shines on my life, it brightens me up. It takes me out of the pit of despair. When you allow Jesus Christ to fill you with his light, it'll bring out the best in you. Jesus Christ can do for you what possibly years of therapy has not been able to do for you. Now, I would say still go to therapy. I'm not against that at all. Don't email me about that. I think that's awesome. But I'm going to tell you something. He's bearing therapy. He truly is. He can actually help you. He can help you to actually change. His word dispels darkness in our life. Why is that? 
He's the lie of the world. <laughs> you know, that's what he says. He's the lie of the world. Now, folks, um, you know, today being Christmas, you may feel a bit overwhelmed and maybe you're going through some tough days. But I'll tell you something. The good news is because of Christmas, there is now a light in our world that can drive the darkness out of your life. I love one last verse. Let me give you 1 John chapter 2, verse 8. That's what it says. Jesus lived the truth of this commandment, and you also are living it. Now catch this. For the darkness is disappearing, and the true light is already shining. It always amazes me that when I think about the first Christmas, you know, that star that appeared in the sky, everybody saw it, you know, but only wise men followed it. Most theologians believe that the majority of the population saw the star, but it was only the wise men who knew it was a sign and they followed the sign to the Savior. I guess that's why they were wise, right? <laughs> You see, it's one thing to know there's a light in the world, but it's a whole different thing to follow it. And the point today on Christmas Day 2022 is it's really your choice. I mean, it's true. You can choose darkness or you can choose light. And I believe you can choose to live in the days that God has appointed for you to live in, in the light of His love. You know, another way of sort of looking at it is, do you want to get out of your dark days? Do you want to move from your discouragement? Then you got to start choosing to live in the light. Now, you may be here today and you're a Christian, but some circumstance, you know, something that we've already discussed has sort of, you know, placed you in a season of darkness. I want to tell you as a church family, well, we want to come alongside you. We want to help you through your dark days. That's, that's what we're here for. We want to be that family that you can belong to to be an encouragement for you. And uh, the neat thing about the people who call Highlands home is, man, we could, we could pass the mic around today, couldn't we? We could give testimony after testimony after testimony of people who have been through hideous dark days. And yet, with the help of Jesus and the help of a church family and close friends, they've been able to go through to the other side because they found strength in Christ. And you may be here today and you have never trusted in Jesus Christ. So I just would suggest to you that you be like those wise men. <laughs> and you make the wisest decision today that you could ever make. And that would be to invite the light of Jesus into your life. Hey, would you pray with me? Let's pray. God, thank you for this Christmas day. It's incredible to be able to spend it with our church family. And I pray for those that are living in some discouragement and disappointment and dark days because things have happened in their life. And Lord, they love you. They've got a heart for you. But situations have happened that's just caused some discouragement and disappointment. It happens to all of us. And God, that's the reason we need you. And you're our encourager. You'll never leave us. God, you'll give us enough light to take the next step. And we'll find that in our darkest days, that your light will shine the brightest. So God, I just pray for those that are struggling today. They're glad Christmas is almost over. But Lord, I, I just pray you'd put a little encouragement in their hearts today. You'd give a, a, little, a little heart of love from you today that they would sense your power and your presence. And Lord, if, if, if there are folks that you've gathered among us today that has never trusted you as Savior and Lord of their life, it's just so simple. Even a child, you're here and you're a child, and, and, and maybe you haven't been able to follow me the whole service, but if you're here today and, and you're a child or you're an adult and, and you know you need Jesus, let me just say, just, just pray this prayer. Just say, dear Jesus, I'm, I've made mistakes. Lord, Lord, I've committed some sins in my life. I'm a sinner. I admit that. I'm broken. And, and I ask you today, Jesus, on Christmas Day, Lord, as I celebrate your birth, I, I, I believe you got a plan, a better plan for my life than what, what I've been able to do. And so, God, I, I pray you'd just invade my life. I invite you into my life. I surrender my life to you right now. I ask you to be my Lord and Savior. I need a family to belong to. And, uh, I just... Thank you so much for saving me today. 
And hey, if you made that decision, that is awesome. It's the reason Jesus came. I pray that you might go from this place and experience Christmas like you've never experienced it before, knowing the light of Jesus resides within you. God, as we go, may we enjoy the time that we have as we continue to celebrate this day of your birth. And God, remind us today that you're our encourager. You're with us through everything we face. God, you have a plan and purpose for our life. You give us enough light to take the next step. And God, you love us so much that you'd sent Jesus to die on the cross for us. Lord, just remind us of that truth. Have your will and way in our life. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.